Welcome everybody to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. And this week's show, I joined Bill Spicer and we're gonna be fly fishing for big northern pike. I'm talking northern pike that 35, 40, 45 inches and better. We're gonna be talking about the techniques, the tackle, the equipment setups, the leaders, and especially we're gonna be talking about the flies. It's gonna be a great show here at Keg Lake in Northern Ontario. Stay with us. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Country, That Real, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Scientific Anglers, Able Reels, Ross Reels, Superfly, Fly Fishing for Everyone. Bill and I flew into Keg Lake today via Lunenberger's Air Service. My guide for the week will be Derek Crossman, a very experienced pike handler and somebody who really understands this lake. Here on Keg, we uh, get a, a lot of our average pike. You're looking at, you know, 32 inches, sort of. Uh, we do get a lot in the in the 40 inch range, which is nice for sure. Uh, other species of fish that you can catch here at the CAG, you'll get a lot of walleyes. We do real well walleye fishing, of course. Uh, lake trout, there's, there's some perch. Uh, you know, they're more of a bait fish here on the lake. You can also take advantage of our river, the Apichuan River, for some pretty awesome brook trout fishing as well. In CAG Lake, the number one food source is walleye and cisco. However, big pike will eat virtually anything else, including ducklings, muskrats, and even turtles. Almost anything is on the menu for a big pike. Okay, Colin, this spot here, we got a nice deep cabbage bed coming up from deep water into shallow water up beside this island here. And uh, there's some nice rocky points on the island and the fish like to move from the deep water up into this weed bed you know, being a predator fish, they'll, they'll ambush their prey sitting in this weed bed here and, uh, you know, work your fly right over top of those weeds and we should pick up a big fish. Good bow control, Derek. Thank you. This is uh, tough winds. Uh, you're making some nice casts too with this wind. So what we're looking for is to find the big boys that would eat this guy. And it's not this a bad fish, but up here at Keg Lake, this is a very small fish. Not a tiny, tiny, but it's certainly not what you're, we're looking for, is it, Derek? No, not quite, but. He really munched it too, didn't he? Anything that wants to tug on the end of my line isn't a bad thing. <laughs> you and my pliers, are you all good? All good, good job. Good. 
Having excellent boat control is key when casting to targets in high winds. Listen as Derek explains this and why a good guide is really important. Well, Colin, I like to, you know, click my motor in and out of reverse, kind of like a semi-back troll to really control where the bow of the boat is. It's easier to control it from the back here and let, let the bow swing to where it needs to be to give you the optimum opportunity to keep your bait right over the weed bed and where you want to fish. One of the things you can do when you've got really tough wind conditions like I have right now, and we've got a weed bed here I'm trying to cast to, is I've got a floating line, and I'm having the fly getting pulled up. And I don't want to use too heavy a fly because it's too tough to cast with these conditions. So what I'm doing is I'm putting in a short piece of full sinking line. This one's about, I don't know, three, three and a half feet. It's type five, and it's going to get down real quick. But this is basically a mini sink tip. I just took it off my full sinking line. Uh, you can buy these already ready made. But I'm going to put this in. I'm still going to have my uh, approximately uh, four feet of 50 pound mono to about two feet, two and a half feet of wire. But the key is I'll be able to do a cast it, pause, two, three, four, start stripping it back, and it'll get it down in the water column to where these pike are. Because I think with these waves, and I've got probably about a foot and a half, two foot waves here. I mean, this is really awful conditions, but. We're still getting pike. I mean, there are little ones right now, but if we find the big ones, I need to get it down in the water column because they're not going to come up to the surface. And uh, that's where my fly is right now. So one of the things you'll probably notice, I'm using a sidearm cast, but I'm not going directly perpendicular to this weed bed I'm, I'm fishing, even though the wind's coming this way. What I'm doing is I'm casting about 10 to 15 degrees up. And what that does, it allows the fly to sink because the fly line's being pushed, literally, on the surface by this wind so fast that it's pulling my fly out of the kill zone. And I want the fly to be at least six inches under the water. I'm using a floating line here. Now, I know the answer a lot of people say is, well, just go to a sinking line. But the weeds here are not that deep. And if I go to a sinking line, I'll be snagging up my, line, my fly all the time. So I'm really trying to get those pike. And I've got a few little guys here so far looking for the big ones. But I'm throwing the fly such that it's just above the weeds, about a foot down, and they're seeing it, and they're coming up and hitting it. But it's just trying to find the right cast, and the sidearm cast seems to be working fast. You get it out just up, do a mend, and then let it sink for a bit, and then start the strip. And that's working really well, to good, you know, getting a good presentation. That's what this is all about. Even if the presentation is only 20 feet long, oh, there's a fish. That's a better fish. Oh, let go. But just proved my point, presentation. That's what's key, whether you're using a fly or a spinning lure, like a big spinner. You've got to get your lure or fly into the kill zone and present it the right way. More of the, oh, there you go. Oh, he's a big guy. There you go. Where are all the big boys? Good sign of a healthy fishery.
Okay, well, Colin, you know, yesterday was a rough day with that wind. It made it pretty tricky for us to fish, and we had to call it quits early. But uh, today, you know, we've had a bit of a cold front move in. It's overcast. It's not blowing as hard, so we should should have better opportunities to fish some of these weed beds. Uh, hopefully, this, this change in weather turns the fish on a little bit for us. Uh, spot we're fishing right here, we're coming up out of some deep water into a nice thick cabbage bed. It should hold a few good fish for us. So, just had a fish come up whack a white streamer using a full sinking line. I gotta tell you, tough conditions, really tough conditions. I mean, it's so cold. Oh, there he is. Uh, he's going under the motor. Trying to get under the motor. It's not a big fish, but it's a good start. Oh, ready to net him? He's got it sideways. And there. Okay, our first decent fish. So here at Keg, that's a small fish, isn't it? Generally speaking, yeah, that's, that's on the small side. So what we're looking for is 38 and above, and of course, uh, our, our dream is to find those 40s. That's right, something about 10 inches more than that one would be perfect. Okay. All right, let him go, revive him. The pike were found in a variety of locations. The edges of weed beds adjacent to deep water were good bets. Rocky points, shoals, shallow bays, and even beaver lodges are producing well. Again, versatility based on conditions is critical. I'm gonna get this guy on the reel. And I was uh, stripping in wire leader. He's not that big, he's not bad. And it looks like he's got himself snagged at the side. You see how he is? In a funny spot. Yeah. Must have been the way he hit it. Okay, get his head up, get his head up, get his head up. Oy. There's a bigger fish. He's a nice solid fish, so we'll call him. But he basically got wrapped up, it looks like. A he's got bit. the. Uh, you see, he's got the line through his mouth. So he must have kicked uh, the fly out, but got himself hooked. Well, they're getting bigger. Look at the teeth. That guy's all business. But look how fat he is. That fish is really healthy. Well, we thought conditions were tough yesterday. Here on our third day, last night, zero degrees Celsius, high for the day eight. We started at 21 degrees Celsius for a high two days ago. So we've got a big temperature inversion here. We're gonna have to really put on our thinking caps to figure out where the big pike are and get down to them. See what we can do, Derek. All right, sounds good, Colin. Bye, puppy.
cold fronts will challenge your angling skills. This is mainly because fronts send most fish into a negative feeding mood. Rain, high winds, and overcast skies occur in the initial stages of most cold fronts. After the edge of the cold front passes, typical weather conditions are bright, blue skies, few clouds, low humidity, and a drop in air temperatures. These post front conditions might be pleasant for the angler, but they make for tough fishing. Let's join Bill as he tackles a nice pike. Yeah, oh yeah, all of a sudden I felt nothing. I felt the weight of the fly and then all of a sudden nothing. So that meant the, the, the fish ran at me. Oh yeah, sure that's not worth a net. Yep. There we go. You got good strong hands, my friend. <laughs> Look at the bite mark on him. It's from spawning. <laughs> you have some fun times. Okay, Derek, we can let him go. Or I should say let her, because the bigger fish are the females. My fly box is such a mess, but it's a sign I'm using it. And you know something? I love pike flies. There's so many different varieties. There's top water, which is great when they're on the surface. Subsurface, there's jointed, there's weighted, black, yellows, oranges, combinations. What do you choose and when do you choose it? In this next segment, we're going to talk about the flies for pike fishing and what's best. You need two types of flies at Keg Lake for pike large streamers in perch colors, white, and orange and black are good bets. My favorite pattern is the jointed double D tied by Pat Cohen from upstate New York. For surface flies, black is clearly my top choice. Large saltwater patterns that create a water disturbance are preferred as this attracts big pike. My favorite topwater pike fly is tied by Brad Bowen from Wisconsin. This pattern is known as the thunder chicken, and this fly is absolutely deadly. When you're fly fishing for pike, one of the things you wanna spend some money on is a good quality rod, good quality reels, and of course the fly lines that you need to pike fish. Different times of the year, and different times of the day, the pike are going to be different parts of the water column. And you need the different types of fly lines, like this floating line or this full sinking line, to get down to the pike. Let's talk about the rods, reels, and fly lines you need to effectively pike fish. For rods, you need fast action, nine or 10 weight models. I like saltwater rods, as they have fighting butts and large stripping guides. You want fast action rods to help you punch large wind resistant flies in all conditions. For fly lines, I find two types are required. A floating line specifically designed for turning over big flies is critical. Specially designed pike lines are ideal for this. A full sinking fly line in type four or type five is perfect for quickly getting large streamers down in the water column. You wanna get your fly down in the water column because often this is the kill zone for aggressive pike. I like using my saltwater reels with large arbors for pike. You don't necessarily need the drag system, but the size is perfect. Many times a pike will strike hard and run quickly. This leads to line burns on your fingers. I recommend stripping gloves or finger protectors to help avoid line burns. These work well for saltwater applications as well. Oh, did he hammer that? Whew. He jumped right on top of it and that, oh, he's got into the weeds. Got you down in the weeds? Yep. There he is. Oh, it's not that big. It's bigger. It's a little better fish. Oh, 
nice, nice thick one that, again. Yeah. Jeez. Nice heavy fish, Colin. That's the problem with any good fishing trip. There's an ending. And you know, we've had a great time, Bill and I, here at Keg Lake. This is a phenomenal fishery for northern pike and walleye, and even brook trout. In fact, I'm so excited about this place, I'm going to come back next spring, probably in June. I'm going to fish for the big pike, but I'm bringing my fly rod to do some brook trout fishing as well. I hope you enjoyed today's show. We learned a little bit about pike fishing and some of the tackle techniques and fly patterns you need to know about. Go to the website, newflyfisher.com, to learn more about this show and others. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Country, That Real, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Scientific Anglers, Abel Reels, Ross Reels, Superfly, fly fishing for everyone. To learn more about the new Fly Fisher, our locations, contests, news, and much more, come visit and like us on Facebook.